second to hit record and we're good. Meeting is called to order. Jim, you can read the sunshine statement, please. He advised that proper notice has been given by the Township Council in accordance with the Sunshine Law in the following manner. Notice advertised in the Burlington County Times and Camden Carrier Post on January 7, 2021 and posted on the bulletin board on the same date. Mr. Smith? Hi, I'm here. Mr. Jenny? Here. Ms. Pareo? Here. Mr. Lyon? Here. Mr. Burrell? Here. All right, good evening, everybody. At this time, we have our consent agenda. I'm asking for a motion to approve resolution 2021-35 and resolution 2021-36. Do I have a motion? Motion. Virginia? Yeah, Virginia, and then okay. uh, Lynn, second. you mind seconding? Thank you. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Jenny? Yes. Ms. Pareo? Aye. Mr. Lyon? Aye. Mr. Burrell? Aye. Those resolutions pass. Next, we have our motions. I need a motion authorizing the payment of bills, including all purchases made under the cooperative purchasing agreement. I'll make a motion to pay that bill. Second. Marla. Lynn, second. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Jenny? Yes. Ms. Pareo? Aye. Mr. Lyon? Aye. Mr. Burrell? Aye. Next, I need a motion accepting the report of the CFO, including the January year to date revenue report, year to date budget report, and January check register. I have a motion. Motion. Lynn, second. I'll second. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Jenny? Yes. Ms. Pareo? Aye. Mr. Lyon? Aye. Mr. Burrell? Aye. Next, we have a motion appointing Francisco Marced to the zoning board as an alternate number two for a term to expire December 31st, 2021. So moved. Motion. Tom, second by anybody? Second. second. Lynn Virginia. can have that one. Lynn, okay. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Jenny? Yes. Ms. Pareo? Aye. Mr. Lyon? Aye. Mr. Burrell? Aye. All right, great. Thanks, everybody. Now we have our work session. And uh, Jamie, do you mind promoting? Oh, yep. Uh, Deb and Al should be together. Uh, we have our report from the Green Team. This is their annual report. Uh, they do this, as the name suggests, every year. They keep us up to date with what's going on, get us up to speed and um, provide us with some information how we can help them. So Deb, can you hear us and can we hear you? Yes, yeah. I can. So we wanna thank you for allowing us to address the council. We thought we'd give a little bit of uh, background because obviously there's some very new council members. Um, the green team developed a community forestry plan with the assistance of Barry Emmons as our forestry consultant and it was funded with a small grant from the Department of Environmental Protection. And on April 3rd, 2018, council adopted the plan. We submitted it to the state, urban, the Urban and Community Forestry Program for approval. The, our plan was approved May, 2018, and the plan laid out goals for the next five years. We just completed our third year under the plan and we'd like to request after you hear our presentation that uh, the mayor will sign our annual report so we can submit it to the state by February 15th. So we thought we'd give you an overview of our plan, which represents a joint effort between the green team, I'm gonna say public works, administration, planning and zoning. Um, in the first three, three years, our goals were to ensure that Public Works employees and green team volunteers met the training requirements. Um, the green team was, was providing education and outreach related to trees and plantings and bugs and all kinds of crazy things. Um, the green team was to create um, tree inventories of our parks and playgrounds. Uh, we, we were to apply for Tree City USA as you know, a lot of towns have been Tree City for a very long time. Delran has never. 
Um, we wanted to plant new trees, use the inventories to um, develop planting and maintenance plans, uh, apply for planting grants and, and celebrate Arbor Day. So what have we done? Um, we have, okay, we have um, done a really nice job keeping ourselves trained. Um, we got, we're required to have eight CEUs and we got 15 and a half. Um, uh, Mike Kramer at Public Works and Al Carp did like a, a big training. Um, we did a little bit of education and outreach this year, not, not as much as we normally would have liked to have been able to do, but we all understand that. Um, we're still working on the inventories. We have a hard time uh, keeping up. I guess I'm going to say that. Um, we have celebrated Arbor Day the past uh, two years. We planted three trees at Conroe in 2019 and two at Notre Dame in 2020 and one at Brown Street. Um, in addition, we also planted uh, 20 trees at Jake's Place in Community Park. So it sounds good, right? So we should tell you what we haven't gotten done. All right. Um, and Al's going to talk. We have, what we haven't done is we haven't completed the tree inventories of our parks and playgrounds. As we know, with COVID-19, uh, a lot of our members are seniors and uh, we just can't all get out together. Now that we'll be able to get shots, hopefully we'll be able to meet and, and complete the project this year. Inventories are a prerequisite for planning grants. So we're gonna, we're gonna try to apply for a new planning grant this year. Uh, I have about 85 trees in pots in my yard. We've ordered seven for the um, upcoming, this coming year to plant for Arbor Day and some in our parks. Of course, we need to plant more trees because we are not keeping pace with removals. In 2020, we planted three small trees and Public Works removed six mature trees. We applied to Tree City USA in 2019. While we met three of the four requirements, our application was rejected because of our existing tree protection ordinance does not identify any person or office responsible for the trees on municipal property. We presented recommendations for enhancements of our tree protection ordinances in February, 2020. We hope that these efforts to amend our ordinances will be restarted shortly. Trees enhance our environment by reducing noise, blocking winter winds, shading the summer sun, adding color to our landscape and increasing property values. Trees also protect against the heat island effects in the summer. Therefore, we need to encourage residents and developers to plant the right trees correctly and that existing trees are protected from whenever possible. Much of this can be accomplished through changes to compensatory planning. A five-year-old tree will take 20 plus years to provide the benefits of the one tree removed. Developers should be required to protect mature trees and to develop a plan that would be used to determine the value, a siding scale based on species and size of healthy trees that must be removed. If they cannot plant all the required tre trees on their property, we strongly recommend that a tree bank be established to fund planting trees on municipal property. Thank you. So we sent um, a copy of the annual report. We did not forward a copy of the full plan but if you'd like that, we can easily send that and Jamie can send that around. Um, we also sent in uh, what we, we like to do an annual report of what we did the previous year. And that went to Jamie also. Um, if, if, I don't know, did you send that around Jamie? Okay. Yeah, so you've already seen that. Um, so if anybody has any questions, we're here. If not, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. I want to, on behalf of the council and the mayor, thank you guys for all your hard work. I know, it, you know, there's a lot of behind the scenes people don't see a lot of meetings, um, you know, very challenging at times. Uh, but we know we appreciate all the work you guys do behind the scenes and, um, you know, to make Delray a better place uh, for our residents. And I just, you know, two quick comments. I read your report as always. It's it's right on right on point. Uh, in reference to your tree, uh, your tree ordinances, we we got to get. We, we talked via email, but we are gonna get our committee meeting uh, with the mayor and, and Lynn, um, you know, so we can start working on on the, that tree ordinance. And as we did mention, um, 
you know, the solar community solar is going to be coming to Delran, hopefully. Yeah, that's um, awesome. Very excited with that and the mayor. Uh, and that's going to bring some great points to your uh, certification. I think it's 25 points, uh, which is a, an incredible amount. So we're but looking forward to that. it also gives us an opportunity, those of us with lots of trees, to be able to participate in solar. Yep. So yep. that's an awesome thing. It's, it's great for, for our low income residents, low to moderate income residents as well, and environmental impacts. It's, it's a win-win for the town and we're looking forward to it. Lots of good stuff. But any council or the mayor have any questions or comments for the green team where we have them? I, I just, I, if I could, I just have two comments. Uh, uh, first, I, I read the application and signed that today. So Jamie okay. in possession of that. That was a great application. I was I, you know, we were, I felt like we were this close and it was just some things that uh, I'm sure the council will help you with. Yeah. Uh, and we've actually, uh, uh, in current, we've sent a non-binding letter of interest to two different organizations uh, for the community solar. So we're hoping that uh, we can pick for one or maybe both. And uh, I was real happy to learn that it, it impacts it gives the opportunity to, to sign up for both the low to moderate income and um, uh, non low to moderate income folks. I'm not sure what the classification is exactly, but uh, the, <laughs> anybody can sign up once once we have some more information or we get approved. I'm sure there'll be uh, lots of information coming out. Thanks. Oh, absolutely. Chris. We're here to help with education and outreach on that. That would be like right there. Nice job. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great. Any other questions or comments? We can. Um, all right. Well, you guys can enjoy the rest of your night. As we said, thank you very much. And we will definitely schedule. Um, I think we're mayor. You need to confirm <laughs> that date so we can schedule the um, our tree committee meeting. Yes. And uh, we'll get that on the schedule. All right. Okay. Sorry about that. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Um, next up on our agenda, we have our 2021 RAC event dates. And uh, Joe said he's still working, working overtime, so he's not going to be able to get to the meeting. Um, essentially, the RAC meant earlier this, earlier in January, pick these dates for all the events. Um, normally, we publicize these, um, you know, early on, so there's no conflicts. Um, there's a big asterisk at the top of this, you know, this is all pending COVID no restrictions and, and where we're at in a few months. Uh, but the general idea was just to get this in front of members of council and the mayor, um, just so you're aware of the dates that are coming. And if you have any, you know, large objections to the dates um, that, that we're looking at here. Uh, like I said, frankly, I think a, a portion of this is not going to happen with COVID, especially the, the early, um, you know, the summer stuff, hopefully, I mean, let's cross our fingers, but um, you know, these are the dates were tentative dates. So any questions, concerns about these dates for the RAC? Oh, there's, there's some, there's, it's quite an aggressive, uh, uh, list. I'm sure that, uh, as we get further down the road, we'll be able to figure out which ones we can actually do, but it's great to see everybody. Mm -hmm. No, I, I do agree it's an aggressive list, but uh, the RAC is excited. We, we didn't do much last year. Uh, so everybody's kind of chomping at the bit and get out, you know, all hopefully uh, safely if we can do it. Um, and we have had great support from the mayor and council in the past, uh, funding events and making sure we can make these events better for the residents. So hopefully we can do that in the near future. All right, so Jamie, I think that Joe wanted these to be posted on the website, I guess we can you know, do that with a big asterisk at the top. Um, okay. You know, it's we've always done that just so the schools, the AA, you know, other clubs, you know, are aware of any conflicts. Uh, mainly the winter festival and the night out tend to be big hitters that uh, conflict. All right. Okay. All right. And next we have our 2021 budget meeting schedule. I'm going to turn it over to Jeff and the mayor. All right, um, the budget will be transmitted from the mayor to uh, council for review, and that'll take place uh, probably on February 26. We have from February 26 to March 2nd to uh, transmit it over to council, and then council needs to 
um, complete their process prior to March 30th, but actually it's the meeting after March 30th. So introduction would be April 6th. So basically you have the month of March to review the budget. You have work sessions scheduled for the 9th and the 23rd of March. So the question is whether or not um, you believe you're going to need any additional meetings for budget review. In the past, we've been able to do it with two, but um, again, that's up to you guys. I mean, you'll have the budget, essentially the detailed budget sheets for approximately a month, but we only have two meetings during that time to discuss. So you can either add meetings uh, in the middle, or if you think it's gonna be sufficient, then we just move forward with that. But I'd like to let, uh, if council can let Jamie know uh, if we're gonna add any so she can advertise them. I, I, I think in the past we've been all right with two because we have the road discussion you know, as we did a couple, couple months, a couple weeks ago, uh, and that really shaves down some of the debate and some of the time. Um, I think we're okay with two. I mean, does anyone have any thoughts, Mayor? Do you, you know, any changes in the budget with this administration that are going to, you know, require us to really look at, you know, anything like that? No, no, not yet. Uh, thank you, Council President. So I would, I would suggest. I, I believe in the past we would typically. Um, schedule one just in case. So Jeff, tell me again when we, we have to get it to them before uh, the end of March. It's, no, we, no, we, we have to give it to council. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But I we have to, the date is February 26 um, or the meeting, the first meeting after that date. So your, your next meeting is the second. So March 2nd, it has to get to council. And then March they, need, they need to deliver it they need to um, have the first reading um, on like, April 6th. Okay. So, I mean, uh, you know, as, as a precaution, uh, although Knockwood recently, we haven't had to, but maybe we think about that fifth Tuesday in March as the 30th is an option. The only uh, thing, the only thing I'll tell you is if you use that date, it'll be almost impossible to get all of the information done before the 6th. So you're, you're saying the 16th? Yeah, can yeah the we 16th do... works better. It's at the, uh, Otherwise, there's very little time to communicate it to the auditor and get it back and review it. And we've been in that situation before and it, it mistakes can happen. There's a lot There's a lot of work that goes on in Jamie's office and my office. Um, once you guys say it's a go on this budget, it takes at least a full week to get all that stuff up to the auditor and printed and back to us. All right. Well, I mean, let's, if it's okay with council and the mayor, I think the 16th, we can schedule that as that, you know, as the third Tuesday, we don't have a meeting. We can just publicize, we, you know, a normal work session, right? And if we need it, we need it. Um, we've unfortunately had a lot of closed sessions, you know, this, this term. So uh, if, you know, that trend continues, we may need that, you know, meeting. Um, so I don't think it hurts to advertise it. And then we can have a discussion about canceling it. And Tyler, we've we've often done that as just a, we, we other than emergencies or urgent matters, um, we've typically just done that in the past as that's there's one item on the agenda, and that's all. And I know that you know, in all fairness, we have two brand new council folks. Uh, Lynn was on the school board for 36 years, something like that, uh, for a long time, uh, a number of years. So he's used to looking at those big things. I'm assuming. I know Marlo well enough to know that uh, he'll get it in about 10 minutes and figure this whole thing out. So just as a precaution, that's, I think that's a great idea. Um, but we, you're, you're right, we didn't not would have to use that. And I don't anticipate uh, creating any, any uh, problematic features in this year's budget. All right, great. So let's, let's publicize that and why I'm here, let me add that to my calendar. <laughs> Everyone make sure you don't forget to add it to your calendar. Great, um, awesome, okay. Thank you very much. We look forward to the budget. And next up, last on our work session before our closed session is our uh, communication committee discussion. I sent around some background this, this morning. I apologize, I didn't get that to you guys earlier. Um, <coughs> 
in essence, um, you know, in conversations during, um, you know, the campaign and, and while in office here, I think, you know, we've, you know, I've always strived to increase communication with residents. And I think all of us here have, have, uh, have that drive. Um, and this committee would be, you know, appointed to provide a recommendation to mayor and council about ways we can improve communication with our residents. Um, you know, I always think, you know, let's get these people at a table, folks from different demographics, different portions of the town, different age groups, how they receive information, and ultimately ask them the question, how do they want to receive information from the township? Uh, it's very easy for us to guess and try to force a method of communication, uh, but let's get a group together. Uh, they can have a couple roundtable discussions for a couple of months, and then ultimately come back to us and say, you know, here's an idea about what we would like with a newsletter, or we would really appreciate phone call blasts before snowstorms. Whatever it may be, you know, we can rely on our residents to help provide that information to us. You know, the mayor can then take that information and administer it with the help of Jeff's office, you know, put it in the budget and ultimately better communicate with our residents, which I think is, should be one of our top priorities. Um, so this is, you know, just an informal committee that meets, there's no ordinance that needs to be put in place for this. They just meet until, you know, they've completed their work. Um, you know, and we have some names I listed um, who expressed interest and who we've uh, picked out from different demographics, different portions of the town who represent different interests. Um, so, you know, council, I'm more than happy to discuss it with you guys. Do you have any thoughts, any objections on, on this committee? Uh, I think it's a great idea um, to get people together on uh, how we're best going to communicate with the different demographics. Uh, Tyler and I had a couple conversations about it. Um, some of us are not heavily into the social media, but are not necessarily um, uh, not savvy about how to find information. But there are others who um, we may have to tailor some of the communication to and we need to figure out what those means will be. Yeah, thanks, Tom. And I think, you know, the area in my mind that lacks the, lacks the communication is I think our senior folks. You know, I think of my grandmother and her trying to use her iPad it takes her about an hour and a half to FaceTime somebody, right? So, you know, by that time, she's just going to put the trash out on the street and assume it's, you know, it's going out there. Um, so it's just, how do we communicate with, with different folks um, who get their information in, in different ways? Lynn? I think it's also could be very valuable for our non-English speaking or those of our residents who speak a little bit of English. Uh, that's where we really need some communication. Because I think a lot of times that community is ostracized within our community. Yeah, that's a great, great point. We have a very diverse community. I know the school sends out notices in, in different languages and has signs up. Uh, they actually have letters, I think, that are translated in the top three languages. I think it's something we've probably been been overlooking, for sure. Tyler, I have a, a quick question. Um, the website uh, hosting package that we use, is there a way to just uh, uh, incorporate translation in there? Maybe it, a lot of these sites, it's kind of built in and it does it by itself and you can you just see the flag and you click on the appropriate flag and it tr changes the language. Yeah, yeah, there's absolutely ways to do that. Yep. That might be a great start. For sure, for sure. And this is all the type of stuff, I mean, just as Lynn brought up, you know, these are the type of things that we're in the weeds sometimes that we don't think about that, right? Or it's something that we've overlooked that this committee can, from an outside perspective, say, here's your weaknesses, here's your strengths and make some recommendations. Um, so I, I think it will be a great thing for the town. I think it's a step forward that we need and um, it's a win-win for everybody. Any other thoughts or, or comments? I think the, uh, the ideas that were um, the surface were, were excellent. Uh, to your point, Tyler, I've got a, my, my dad is kind of one of those, I call him a technology dinosaur. <laughs> so Trying to get him to, uh, you know, use an iPad or, you know, anything else is like, you know, almost trying to, trying to get a, a bill passed from Congress. So it's, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so, you know, I think we definitely can, you know, noodle and try to figure out how do we uh, reach those folks um, because you know I think that's you know like you said social media is great but if you're if you don't have an Instagram or you know Twitter or Facebook whatever 
we just completely missing that group. And, uh, you know, a lot of times those are the folks that really, uh, you know, need the information the most. Agreed, agreed. So if, if council's okay with this, I'll, I'll uh, ask for a resolution to appoint uh, the following members to this standing committee on communications. It'll be resolution 2021-37. Is that correct, Jamie? Um, if you make this 37, then we have to change the executive. So Okay, 38. Okay, 38, perfect. Okay, 38. And the individuals are, well, real quick, do is everybody, Tom, are you okay? Is everybody okay if uh, the vice president of council joins us at this um, meeting? Do we want to keep it flexible? Yeah, that's, that's fine. Okay. Great. Okay, great. Awesome. So uh, the individuals appointed to the committee would be myself, uh, Tom Lyon, Wendy Mitchell, Colin Rafferty, Deb Hammond, Marianne Ravel, Susan, I'm probably going to pronounce this wrong, and I know you're on the line, Corel, Coriel, um, Lucy Horton, Suzanne Aid, Mary Lipsky, and Patty Colodi. So can I get a motion to approve appointing those folks to the standing committee uh, for communication, resolution 2021-38. So moved. I'll second. Second, great. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Jenny? Yes. Ms. Pareo? Aye. Mr. Lyon? Aye. Mr. Burrell? Aye. Thank you very much, everybody. I think this is gonna be great for us and hopefully in a couple of months, we have a great report that we can bring to council. Thank you, everybody. So now we're going to head as we just wrapped up our work session items moving right along. We're going to go to our reports. Our first report is from our clerk, Jamie Eggers. I have no report tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. And next, our administrator, Jeff Hatcher. Jeff? No report this evening. Thank you, Jeff. And next up, we have a report from our mayor, Mayor Catronbone. Yes, getting a real short one, uh, uncharacteristic as that may be. Just like to uh, once again thank Public Works for a terrific job for the latest storm. There's supposed to be uh, oh, two or six more events coming in the next few days. Um, so uh, I know the guys will be out there working hard. I had the opportunity to ride along with one of the plows, learned a ton. Going to put together a little uh, informational video for you. It's about 75% done so that we can put out uh, so people can just hear and see what some of the issues are. Uh, two quick things. One is, uh, uh, I hope it's okay that I say that uh, Dan Bard uh, worked his last day today. He was nine years with the Department of Public Works. Uh, he was a firefighter for the last 16 years in town and the EMS guy for the last, uh, in Delran EMS for the last 10 years, uh, life member of the fire department here in Delran. Um, so maybe we'll see him at special events. But he got a job that was frankly closer to his home and we wish him the best of luck with his new life. I remind folks that, uh, uh, you know, check on your neighbors, especially in this crazy time with, with all these little storms coming up. You just never know. Uh, offer somebody a ride. If uh, you can do that safely with regard to COVID, you know, your neighbors uh, might need help getting out of their driveway or whatever. If you run into the store, uh, maybe ask that person that might not be able to get out if you can grab something for you. Just if you have any problems or any issues, always feel free. I think I can speak for uh, the members of council. Just reach out to us. We'll find a way to help you uh, uh, with anything that you might need in these times. Just, you know, keep looking out for one another. All right, that's my report. Thank you, Mayor. We appreciate it. And uh, I'll save it for my report as well. Uh, next up, we have our solicitor, Salvatore Siciliano. Uh, good evening. Uh, nothing for open. I have comments for closed. As I expected. <laughs> Thank you. And next up, our engineer uh, from CME and Associates, Jim Winkowski. Jim? Hi. <clears throat> Good evening. Uh, a few things. I just want to, uh, if everybody might have seen it, New Jersey American Water started their water main replacement last week. Uh, they started over on Baylor, uh, and then they'll be moving to 8th, and then working towards uh, Brown, uh, Ithaca, Juniata, and, and so forth. They're going to be out there for you know a couple of months doing that main replacement. They agreed to all your conditions um, that you discussed last time with the moratorium waiver and the bond and everything like that. So all that's being processed right now. Um, they do have police out there for traffic control. So 
projects and we've been keeping an eye on them with their the trench repair and, and the, they have a good contractor doing the work so it's, it's just going pretty smooth uh, I will bring this up at a future meeting. I did. I think I mentioned it to Jeff real quick. They do have added potentially Notre Dame Drive to their uh, water main replacements. It's not in their um, administration. It's not part of this project, but they still want to do it this year sometime in the fall. So um, there is no PCG work over there. It's just uh, the water main. So we would have to look at the road and potentially maybe doing uh, some sort of agreement with them for full resurfacing if the, if the council wanted to. The road is in not the best shape. So it is on the list of in our, in our five-year plan to do it at one point. So I'll bring that up at a, at a future meeting. Um, also last week, we had a pre-construction meeting with the county and the county's contractor, R.E. Pearson on the uh, Rancocas Greenway Trail. Uh, this is a trail that the county's um, doing that extends from Amico Island to Pennington Park in Delenco. Uh, it goes through uh, Riverside. So we'll be building a trail starting in March March, maybe mid-March um, at Amico Island where they're gonna have a, a construction trailer and it extends along River Drive to up through into Riverside. Then it, and it goes through Riverside around the ball fields, around the Riverside treatment plant, crosses over a tributary there into uh, Delenco and then through Delenco and um, whatnot, all the way to Pennington Park. So uh, it's a good project. It's gonna take about six to seven months. So they wanna start around mid-March and be done around August, September. So I can fill you in you know, periodically as a project goes on. CME is actually doing a construction management for that job. So I'll have detailed information for you as you, if you, any of you uh, request. So um, other than that, that's uh, all I had for tonight. Great. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. Uh, next up, we have our reports from members of council. So first up, we have Councilwoman Virginia Parejo. Virginia. Um Yes, I know I might sound like a broken record, but I just want to remind everyone to continue to wear their masks, wash your hands often, keep the appropriate distance from others, and stay safe. And that's all for tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Next up, we have Councilman Smith. Yes, uh, just a quick report. Um, also, you know, piggybacking on what um, Councilwoman Pareo said, you know, we actually met three weeks ago, um, you know, to mark the 400,000. Uh, you know, passing of Americans from COVID. And since then, uh, we're already above 465,000. So just in those three weeks, you know, we've lost an additional 65,000 Americans. So, you know, to that point, you know, folks, I know that the numbers seem like they're coming down, uh, but we still need to be vigilant and make sure that, uh, you know, we're you know, wearing our masks, keeping social distance, you know, using hand sanitizer and washing our hands uh, just so that we can all remain safe. Um, it's, you know, it's a tough time. I know people want to get out and do different things, but, uh, you know, safety is number one. And that's it. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, well said. And next up, we have our reports from Councilman Jenny. Uh, I just, I'll echo uh, the mayor's comments as well as the other comments regarding uh, COVID protection and being safe. I just want to uh, um, mention that how proud our council and mayor should be for the front page story on uh, Mr. Smith today in the Burlington County Times. It was uh, very nice to see. and It was a very positive thing for Delran. That's my report. That's awesome. Great. I didn't see the reports. I didn't see the uh, the press. So I'll have to take a look at that after the meeting. That's, that's awesome. Um, next up, we have a report from our Vice President of Council, Councilman Lyon. Thank you, Council President. Um, like to echo what the mayor said about the public works doing a good job and staying on the social distancing theme. If you're behind somebody plowing snow, make sure you have a good following distance because you know these plow trucks do push the snow, then have to back up. And if you are in a tiny little car and right on their tail and they back up, you may get hit. And it happened a couple times through my work and my day job that we had to deal with. So please, if you're out there, we're going to have some more storms. If you're behind a plow truck, 500 feet, assume they might be backing up so you don't get injured. They can do their job and we all get the roads cleared. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great point. Great. I never thought about that. That's it's a good point. Uh, I have no official report other than echoing uh, the comments of the mayor and council. 
and uh, encourage everybody to be safe, socially distant. Uh, light's the end of the tunnel, but we can't give up now. So uh, let's hold on, hold on tight. Um, at this point now, I'm gonna ask for a motion and there is uh, the front page. Great, I, I gotta read that, I didn't see that. That's awesome. Congratulations, Councilman. Um, at this time, we're now gonna have public comments uh, and questions. So I'll ask for a motion to open the floor to the public. So moved. And a second, please. Second. Lynn, thank you. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. All Aye. those opposed? The motion carries. The floor is now open to public comment. For those folks joining us on Zoom, we ask that you please raise your hand. And we will then unmute you and allow you to speak in our meeting. Just give folks a second to do that. Last call. And seeing no hands, I'm gonna ask for a motion to close the floor. Motion. Lynn in a second, please. I'll second. Marlo. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The floor is now closed. And at this time, I'd ask for a motion to pass resolution 2021-37, a motion to enter executive, set, executive session to discuss contract uh, discussions with Abrasive Alloys, contract dis discussion with 89 Hartford Road, and litigation regarding 4101 Bridge Barrow Road. Can I get that a motion? moved. Tom, Second. Lynn, Jamie, do you need a roll call? You're muted. <laughs> it's all good. I constantly forget to do that. <laughs> okay. Mr. Okay. Smith? Aye. Mr. Jenny? Aye. Ms. Pareo? Aye. Mr. Lyon? Aye. Mr. Burrell? Aye. And the resolution passes. We will now head into executive session to discuss those items and those items only. Uh, for the public who's joining us, we will be back and any decision that's made that requires a vote will be made here in front of the public. Uh, we hope to be back shortly. Jamie, if you want to record, we'll go live and we're back in our public session. Uh, there's no action to be taken in public. Uh, so at this time, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Great. Our motion carries. Our meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a good night. Night. And we'll good see night, you everybody. next week. Have a good evening.